All right, we are up and running. Hello there, I am Michael Garber, co-founder of New Earth Ascending. And if you're watching this on the live live, you're watching it on Source Energy, which is our private social network. Um, we will be doing more and more videos there on that private social network because we really love the space that it creates and opportunities that it provides for deeper connection and also the space to have a really expansive conversation that we can reach far and wide and nice and deep into each of the conversations that we all want to discuss um, from the bottoms of our heart um, during these times on the planet. So if you'd like to join in on that uh, conversation and within the network, you can go to the New Earth Ascending, um, dot org website and uh, learn more there about how to become a member of the network and to join in the conversation. I will be posting appropriate videos um, onto the various social networks um, when it feels right to do so. But if there are some conversations that are best, you know, kept heart to heart, then we'll keep those over um, on Source Energy. So I do recommend getting a membership today. Um, in terms of what I want to speak about, so most people that I know at this point are aware of different things, especially one big news story that's happening um, currently and ongoing. And there have been and there will continue to be some other big news stories coming up in the years to come. And rather than focusing specifically on the details of one event, I figured I would make this video and make the post that I made on social media to speak directly to some key concepts to help you and to help all of us to navigate these times to, um, yeah, to walk our way through them together, hand in hand, heart, heart to heart, as best as we can, um, while simultaneously dealing with all the uh, struggles and challenges that might come up and will come up. So um, I'm going to read through a little bit of the post and give some key concepts, but ultimately this is a time that really is inviting each of us to go really, really deep into our hearts, to really become very aware of what happens within our minds, and to learn how to um, transform the quality of our heart, the quality of the mind, into a way that shines with fierce light, with radiant light, with the light of a trillion suns, I even say in the post. Um, and there will be plenty of opportunities coming up uh, for each of us to feel into those deep and um, dark, shadowy spaces within our mind, within our own heart, um, so that we can bring more love and more presence into them, so that we can see life more clearly and truly walk um, more stabilized together as a greater family here upon the planet with multiple levels of life here. Not just humanity, but from the mineral to the animal to the um, even the transcendental level to fly. So that's the key of this message. So I'm going to read through, I'm going to speak to it. If there are any questions, you can put those in the chat. I'll get to those a little bit later, but I think all is good. Give me a comment if you can hear well, but I think I'm probably good. Um, okay, so what I want to speak to in this post that I put up on different social media accounts was we're moving through some collective nodal points. And these nodal points of our experience, you know, they're main intersection points of a lot of different experiences, influences, people. Um, yeah, much coming together to create lots of opportunity to transform. And that will often look like adversity, struggle. Um, and what needs to also be brought into that is what we see occurring, what is happening in our lives right now, our, our, our manifestations based off of past actions of so many um, different uh, initiation points, whether that be from your own choices, whether that be from other people's choices, whether that be alignments in, you know, in the cosmos, whether that be people, you know, back in time and history. Um, but many, 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 many levels of interactions um, coming together to create the soup of transformation that we're all in right now. Um, so let's go through some key concepts. We're in a changing of epochs. And what that means is, besides the time that we know of now in terms of written history and, and what's really 
you know, commonly known. A lot of the esoteric schools, the esoteric meaning, you know, not commonly known, occult schools, which means hidden, mystery schools, and even some of the different traditions, religions, spiritual traditions, uh, indigenous lie, um, uh, wisdom traditions, all speak of multiple epochs um, beside, beyond what we commonly know of in, you know, what you get taught in the history books. So without going into so much detail about all of them, we could say there's the Atlantean epoch. Further back, we could have the Lemurian epoch, which is a really big moment for humanity in terms of spiritual growth. And then we have others going back in time, but just to at least see that idea that there's been multiple times of creation, multiple ages, and through each age, there's a span of time that we're given, humanity is given, to grow and to learn and to put things into practice in different ways and to refine um, our process of our, our consciousness, uh, the way that we live in right relationship. And then as that cycle comes to a close, different things are put to a test and refined. That cycle closes, with, which often includes um, events, big events with the planet, with society, um, as the society goes through its transformation and a new epoch begins. And so we have that time now. I do want to put out a word of caution, uh, which I will get to later in this, but um, within many of those traditions, there have been prophetic visionary beings that have described timelines of experience at those changes of epochs and that was right and good from that time from back then um, we have moved so much has happened so much has changed as soon as information is brought in and as soon as that information sorry i'm in indonesia cars over there and things like that um, as soon as that information is then conveyed and written it is transformed um, through people speaking about it through people acting upon it through, so as soon as it's brought through it's already begun to shift and change um, so be very very careful of what types of um, visionary prophetic ideology that you're giving power to um, because you want to hold the highest and best vision so Many people are going to say it's this or it's that. Some people are going to say this is going to happen. Some are going to say this group or that thing or whatever is doing whatever. But keep an objective awareness there when it, when it comes to those stories and what you hear and feel. But most importantly, hold the highest vision of the highest outcome possible for all parties included across all sectors. Um, that redemption be available for all beings, all levels of life and that grace is truth and hold that hold that post as best as you can um so the law of karma and like i said what is happening right now everywhere all phenomena that's being experienced is the effect of past actions past causes um that have that are multi-layered coming from many directions many levels of reality to create the experiences that we're having now. So as things come up, this is the law of karma, um, as certain things come up, people often say things like karma might be a negative thing um, or that karma is always teaching bad lessons or something like that. Karma is actually a force of reconciliation in that things come around again and again for us to look at um, so that we can shift it, transform it, come into a, a more aligned um relationship with all those components and then move into a, a higher point of creating more freedom more joy more all those good things so keep that in mind as these different challenges come up they're coming because of past actions and they're giving us an opportunity to refine our mind refine our hearts refine our actions the words that come from our mouth, the things that we give power to so that we can move off of that wheel. And that wheel is called samsara in those Eastern and occult and esoteric traditions. It's that wheel of the wheel. Everyone can probably relate to cyclic events that have happened in their life, the same themes coming around again and again. So that's in, the per in your personal wheel in this life. But if you open to the idea of reincarnation and rebirth in that you can't get it all completed in one life. So we come again and again through multiple uh, rebirths, multiple lifetimes, multiple experiences of passing out of a body, coming back into 
um, there's some learning that happens in between, some reviewing, if you will, but that there's lots of that going on. So we have been all players. We have been the animal, we've been the mineral, we've been the perpetrator, we've been the victim, we've been the unintelligent, we've been the intelligent. We have to go through so many experiences, winding up um, our mind with these different experiences, and then after a certain point, which is the point that so many of us are in now, if you're listening to this video, you're in this point now where we are unwinding them, we are refining them, and so that we can realize the truth of what we are right now, right here, then and forever, that we are much larger than just these single lives that we've been focused in. Um, so these reactive emotions that come up, these Every experience you have gets recorded. And then experiences that could be, let's call it a traumatic experience. A traumatic experience is something that obviously causes some level of physical, mental, emotional trauma. Most of that energy, for most people, most of the emotional impact is not expressed and released. We don't shake, we don't have practices of you know, making sound, dancing, writing, there's so many things that you can do to release that energy. But because we don't have that, it gets stored within our body and our mind. And then it's you know recedes into the background. But when an when an action comes up, something some cause in our environment comes up, the effect is that reactive emotionality, and it just seems like it just comes out of nowhere, it just bursts out. These are all those inappropriate responses that we have to events. You know, when you get really mad for no reason, or really sad when it was just a small little thing. These are some scars. We have these in our own being, and the earth also carries imprints and impressions from past experiences. Kind of like when you go into um, an environment and like a, a room and you can feel the mood, you can feel the collective mood of a town when you go into it. Those are some scars. And so not only are are we at this point, and really, you know, there's so many opportunities in a lifetime, but right now we have personal, collective, national, planetary, you know, there, it, it, these impressions really we could go very far into understanding what they are and how they how they play in in affecting our mood and how we relate to one another but at the earth also has that so we are all of that is being freed up it's being activated so that it can be transformed so it can be cleared up so that we can move into a new time of creation a new epoch i'm going to check my time because i'm trying to make my videos um Oh, well, I went <laughs> for my 10 minutes, but that's okay. That's just where I am. This video must need to be more than 10 minutes. Um, okay, so maybe I can slow down instead of like blasting you with so many concepts and information. Okay, so let's see here. So as these experiences come up, they are being filtered through our own personal biases and our own conditioning. This conditioning and this and these biases are created by our family of origin, the ideas, concepts, beliefs, attitudes that were given to us by our family. Our if we are involved in a religion of some kind, that also includes atheism is still a way of believing about spirituality. So that is also um, being played out in different ways and um, our national, you know, Gen uh, which sex of the body that you belong to, which gender expression you feel that you are, how that all of that overlays our experience and our perception of all the things that happen to us. And so how often do we actually just, let's say, call a spade a spade, that's a saying, or this somebody was recommending the Gospel of Thomas, there's something in there about it, about like, let's say, is this a phone? Or is this a stupid phone, an amazing phone, a, a phone that, that, like, we put so much extra around um, our interpretation of things, and it just happens automatically. So we have, each of us, so many levels and layers of bias and prejudice and conditioning that that is coming in and overlaying all these experiences that we're having. So we really would benefit from clearing all those things out, getting into right perception, questioning our own mind, our own belief system, noticing when there's tension in the body, because that's reactivated emotional impressions, mental impressions, stored um, movement that didn't get to be fully expressed and exhausted in a healthy way. 
Um, and that's what all the healing services are that people are doing. They're helping people to release those um, those veils of ignorance, those veils of prejudice and bias and um, unintegrated parts of ourselves that we've never, you know, brought back into the wholeness that we are and reintegrated. So if you feel like you're having, you know, really big emotional experiences, whether that be really reactive emotions or whether that be pride, whether that be, uh, you know, any type of body tensing, body holding like that, but also sadness, defeated, sorrow, depression, all of those things, please reach out to us. We have so much um, to offer you in terms of transforming that and, and, and being able to stand upright within your own heart and within your own being um, because everyone benefits when you are aligned and when you are clear. Um, okay, so there's also, okay, so in this reality, there's relative truth. Each person, you know, in a room is seeing a completely different experience of the room that everyone's standing in you see yourself as one way and you know yourself to be one way but let's say three other people are standing in the room with you those three people see you and know you and experience you as something completely different and they'll have certain things that they like and they don't like that's just a small little example of a much larger thing so when you start throwing in you know huge evocative uh, subjects when huge events are happening on the planet we have so many perspectives and so many truths um and certain degrees of actually being able to see clearly what is happening and to know it without the all that bias um so we have to grow in our temperance i think is the word that i want to use um, and our ability to hold space for all of that, even when we don't agree with it, even when we don't appreciate it. I know this in my own self. I absolutely know this. We all have these, well, I can speak to myself. I have this part that wants to, um, yeah, that gets really empowered or emblazoned. Is that even the right word? When when I feel very strongly embrazened, is that, I don't know, we'll get to it. When I really feel passionately about something that passionate feeling about something whether it you know it could be accurate or not it still is affecting so many levels of physiology the the mood the the way to discern it, it brings the focus in and polarizes it so we have to notice when we're coming into those spaces when we're trying to put our opinion above and beyond others really open ourselves take some time to really breathe drop in send love to those parts of ourselves that have been useful and defending and keeping us safe at different times but are they really necessary now and can we instead of you know manipulating our external environment can we first um spend some time sending it love and letting it know that we're here for it it's like those inner child parts that that are just sad and, and need our own being our own loving awareness to to meet that child, that inner child that's scared and afraid, feels misunderstood. Um, so, I, well, this is a time of reckoning. This is a time when so many things are going to come up uh, in the years to come. And people are going to say all kinds of different things about it. Um, there, you know, there's going to be fanatical religious things said. There's going to be people tearing apart religious systems or groups of people. Um, and while there is absolutely room for lots of uh, criticism on all of those levels, um, there's also a lot of beautiful, beautiful things that have come out of nations, out of religions, out of um, everything there's opportunities for beauty to be created by all of it if we choose to do that um, if we choose to see it that way if we choose to come into objective awareness honor all of life come into right action non-harming non-violence as best as we can and make amends when we haven't been able to do that um, but then you know to do what we can do to make sure that it doesn't happen again um, but we have to be very careful that when we point a finger that we have um, also, and, and before we've pointed that finger, that we've done a really honest inventory of ourself um, to see where that pointing finger is coming from and all that. So um, 
yeah, let's see where else we want to go from here. That doesn't mean turning away from the horrors and the travesties and the absolutely terrific things um, that are that have and will happen on this planet. Terrible things are going on. If you look into the news, I want to caution people that if while I want while I encourage all of us to face everything that's happening. Um, and hopefully stay in objective focus. If you cannot stay in objective focus, if you're getting emotionally involved in it, if you're getting mentally involved in it, you find yourself thinking about it really hard afterwards for a long period of time, and it's affecting your well-being, it's affecting your relationships, um, it's affecting you know your health. Please take a step back, go within, take a rest, tap out for a bit. Um, and go self-soothe, go do something to really be with yourself. Try you know, your best to resist anesthetizing um, and numbing yourself out and distracting yourself from what you're feeling because that's, that's the stuff. That's what we're here to work through, the stuff that's coming up. So as best as you can, um, sit with that, feel into that, um, bring love into those spaces, shine the light into the shadow. Somebody once, um, not so long ago, was talking about using shadow to take care of the shadow but i think it this i think when i go into a room that's dark and i can't see what's going on there i turn on the light so shine the light into those spaces um so that we can really really see what's going on here as a human family and really tend to it with absolute loving care and patience and forgiveness really forgiveness is so big forgive immediately forgive immediately that doesn't mean that it's taking that doesn't mean that it's justifying harmful actions but it does mean that you don't have to be poisoned by them internally anymore you can forgive forgive them father for they know not what they have done turn the other cheek there's so many sayings about this level of um, reconciliation within your own being, redemption within your own being, which you have the keys to give yourself. And then through giving it to yourself, you give it and create an opportunity for it to happen for others. And that's really, really important at this time to go from the personal pain, feel it, go into that space, scream, rage, cry, shake, do what you need to do, but then, but then show up and say, what are we going to do here? Because we've We've, we've all contributed to this mess here, whether it's been this one life or whether it's been multiple lifetimes, we've played all parts. And in fact, I would probably put in that if one group is doing something to another group or one person is doing something to another person or you know how that goes, there was probably the roles were reversed in another lifetime. Um, and while that might be hard to accept, we have to know all sides. Um, both sides to really know ourselves as a divine being and to rise up into self-realization and all that good stuff. So zoom in and zoom out. I just spoke to that part. Um, so yes, feel the things. Yes, um, talk truth to your experience um, as best as you can without being harming with the tongue. It's better sometimes to just zip it and sit with yourself or sit with somebody who can hold space for you. But then also while going into that, see what we're learning here. So if we look back into these other epochs of time, or even in our own known history at this point, and if we zoom into the particular details of a particular experience, particular event, and it seems like it's this versus that, or it's you know him versus him, or da 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 da, da. Um, but what the real magic <clears throat> of what's going on is really within the inner being, within the consciousness of all parties involved, what's being transformed, what's being moved. Sometimes a really negative catalyst is put into play so that a positive transformation can happen. But then also sometimes a positive thing is brought on in to soothe and to illuminate and to lift up. So the details, if we zoom in, if we get into our fear states, into victim consciousness, we get really, you know, lit up in our in our emotions, um, we we bring the focus in really tight. But if we zoom out and we say, what's being learned here? What's possible here? What expansion could happen here? And give power to that and lift that up and speak to that um, and empower that in others, um, then I, I think we can get off this wheel a whole lot faster. 
Okay, so unconditioned creation and maintaining highest vision. I'm going to check to make sure all is good there. Melody's got a thumbs up. Oh, I said your name, sorry. Um, okay, so unconditioned creation and maintaining highest vision. I've talked about that. I also want to speak to, and this is going to be maybe hard for some people to hear, those of you that are bringing in um, prophetic visions and things like that, I'm one of those people. This is happening a lot in these uh, sessions that I do. Understand that even with as best as we can, this was just brought up to me recently in a session that I could speak about another time, but there are so many levels of projection that it happened, even within the most refined beings that have done so much work and have achieved high levels of mastery in their own consciousness, there are still opportunities for things to be filtered and for personal bias to come out. So for those of you that are doing this type of work where you're bringing in information and sharing it, we have to practice the highest level of discipline um, and be very, very good at educating all who will listen that this is a possibility. There are various levels of probabilities of different possibilities and potentialities coming, coming out. And there is room for my own bias as I share this with you to come through and it probably is because i'm speaking it and it has to pass through me as a filter um that means if you're doing sessions and you're bringing things in there's just so much flux and 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 timelines and opportunities and even me making this video and speaking to you right now is creating reverberations within the threads of the tapestry of cause and effect so and as you sit there and think think about it, it's reverberating into your pathways of creation, into your opportunities of which way you could go and what, which way you could think and which, what you could do. So there's just so many ways that this can go. And so we have to be very careful not to share information in a way that's going to give power to timelines that we don't want to have happen or that we're... Um, too, too, too excited for it to happen, meaning that we're so attached to this outcome, for this to happen, for this event, for this uh, manifestation of, of new earth or of this or that. We have to just be very careful and just take it with an absolute grain of salt and mostly just be entertained by it. Because what we have power over is right now, right here, everything we say, everything, that, everything we think, everything we give action to, and that's through our words, through our hands, through our you know, through so much. So be very, very selective in, in terms of how you're sharing information and absolutely be very, very selective in terms of what you bring in, even the highest level um, psychics and mediums and intuitives out there. Um, so be aware that there are certain levels of, on the planet, we have all of us, we have people that are um, just good everyday people. We have people of faith that are in prayer. Um, we have high leveled um yogis masters adepts um you could call people that are you know further progressed along the path of self-realization and we have beings in physical body and also in what you could call a light body so like somebody like a, a jesus christ or something like that um and ascended masters, there's so many different things. We have so many of those levels of beings, all praying, all calling in the highest visions, all transmuting through prayerful action, through right action, through right living. Those those very, very advanced being generating powerful thought waves, powerful um, imagery out for humanity to pick up on, to be inspired by, to lean into. So, and then even beyond that, we have races of beings beyond this earth that are also generating powerful waves and thought forms and images and sensations and frequencies onto the planet, saturating this planet, allowing things to be transmuted, allowing things to be cleared up, doing this work out of pure devotion, out of the desire for humanity to come into higher levels of unity, right living, and, and peace. And so we can be a part of that as we come into prayer and with everything that we do with our intentions. But know that there is so much support, and we have so many that are working to steer 
people, groups, families, nations, the whole planet towards a path of least um, suffering so that the reality of non-suffering, the reality of absolute peace, absolute harmony, and higher consciousness expression can be lived by all beings on this planet moving forward. Um, that's the new epoch. That's the time that we're moving into. Um, so this is the end of this of this letter with my expanded description that I've done. But it says, together we stand at the crossroads of destiny, empowered by love, empathy, and the fierce determination to break the chains that bind us. Let us embrace this divine invitation, weaving a tapestry of unity that transcends personal biases and shadows of the past. Our hearts beat in unison, resonating with the song of a better world. With every step we take, let our collective light blaze with the brilliance of a trillion suns, illuminating the way towards a future where love reigns, suffering is but a memory, and the symphony of humanity sings in perfect harmony. It is our time, our shared calling, to embrace the power of love and unity. United we rise into a new epoch of peace, a new earth for all. And that was written on 1010. Just letting all of that sink in, I invite you to take a breath to feel into what has been activated, what has been stirred within you through this transmission. I had definitely some energy moving through as hair standing up at different times. So I know that there was some that was brought through that is beyond the words that I spoke, but through the frequency that, that wanted those works, words to be spoken. So take notes, journal out how, whatever this might have meant for you. How will you put these things into action? What was stirred up that needs to be looked at? Where does the light need to be broadcast within your own heart, within your own mind, so that you can stand within your wholeness and remind your brothers and sisters upon this planet of their wholeness and stand together as we do the work that needs to be done to... Um, transform this planet on every level of society um, for the benefit of all, 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 no exceptions. In fact, for those that you would see as your enemies, pray that they would experience full realization and liberation, even if it, and in particular, if it means that they experience it even before you, be that selfless in, in your calling forth your invocation for what you're calling forth. I'm calling forth realization in myself right here, right now. I'm calling in grace, clarity, understanding, honesty, loving kindness, compassion, patience. I call that forth for not only for myself, but for all. I call that forth for those who have harmed me. Let, let me be an ambassador of light here and now for all. And may it be so. And I send you off with love, and I'll be making, putting this video up. Please check out newearthascending.org and check out how to get involved in Source Energy. We're going to be putting much more videos out. I've had a lot of time to rest and integrate and study myself and various other things. So I'm feeling really empowered to step forward and to speak with you and to share uh, what's been on my heart and mind. So be well. I send you with lots of love. Just gotta check if there's anything else. Oh no, can't hear. Well, maybe it worked. Okay, sending you love. Can hear. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs>